So there you go, Elemental Odyssey Bushido des. Koko ni arimas. Bushido des. This is known as the Suzuki Sierra in Australia. And as you well know, it is the samurai in the American market. Hence the name Bushido. This is an interesting one, being short wheel base, because we got some long wheel base stuff here, or standard wheel base stuff. These are some of the element cars I have here. Now, I've also just gotten the uh, Sendero SE, which we're gonna look at soon. Uh, today, I wanted to compare the Bushido. I guess we're gonna make this fully English. Bushido, but I'm gonna pop the lids off these suckers because I'm gonna show you what's going on. I wouldn't blame you for not grabbing one of these if you already have another element enduro because they are very similar across its different models. One thing I really am curious to find out is how much difference a short wheelbase makes. Uh, what a sweet set of stickers. Ha, ah, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, okay, got to play stickers. All right. Oh, rad. There's original uh, Tron sticker. There's a koi fish. Tron poster, I should say. These garages are neat. Oh, Voltron! Voltron. So, time period correct? They had fun putting this together, you can see. To no one's surprise, it'll be the same radio as all the others. Boxy big thing, but they're comfortable enough to use. I've got a bunch of these things. Nothing wrong with them. Manual, bind plug, always nice to have, I suppose. This is not a bad set of little inclusions. There's a snorkel ready to be bolted on, which we're definitely gonna stick on. Now, these gears are the 11.83% uh, overdrive. So let's just round it up. Comes with about a 7% overdrive and you can put 12% overdrive in if you like. I appreciate that inclusion. Seven I'm pretty happy with. We've got some nylon uh, ball ends and servo horns. They'll actually probably be more than ample for this little car. And we have some spare body posts if you have a different body on the back. And we have uh, the longer shafts to transform this to the longer wheelbase. That's a guess, but I'm, I think that's what that is. So minimal, but absolutely acceptable inclusions. And we shall stick that snorkel on. And I think we need to stick some of these stickers on too, because they look pretty good. This is still the same centrally mounted motor uh, and front and rear setup as you get on the Sendero. It's just that it's shorter. Not a lot shorter, but a bit shorter. Otherwise, this is the same car, and that would be why I think a lot of people haven't reviewed this guy, because if you already have uh, an Element Enduro platform, one of the many, uh, chances are you have a similar vehicle. Now, something interesting, something worth noting, and we're gonna get a bit into this today. This is the Sendero, this is the Ecto. Now, they're very similar, the obvious difference is being the Ecto has those trailing arms as opposed to this setup. And the wheelbase is similar, but not identical. The Ecto is ever so slightly longer. Now, have a look at this video here if you're curious, because I took both of these out to the gorge and I ran two comp courses with it. And you'll see just how similar they can be on a flat course, but once there's some more serious uh, ascending to be done, just how much better the Ecto was. That's, I mean, it's quite interesting. If you're thinking about one of these vehicles, it's worth knowing about. Oh, oh, that just hurts too much. I can't actually get a grip on this. I hope Element changes their body posts. What they did with the, the original Sendero, so much nicer on the fingers. Yes, it's a bit more visually obvious, but These little things are just painful on the fingers to pull out. My finger's still hurting after that. So that's worth noting. And there's your body. So light cups in the front, nothing in the back, although you'll note that they've masked and not painted the rear lights. So if you do, do decide, oh, the paint's coming off. What's going on here?
I've got paint all over my hands. I might have a, uh, a dud. This paint is uh, coming off everywhere. Oh, it's all chipped all around the edges. That's not normal. And there's a hair stuck in the screws. <laughs> I might have got a Friday afternoon build. Anyway, I can ignore the paint chipping as long as it doesn't continue through the body. And obviously I'm not eating from it, so we're not gonna worry about the hair that's stuck in the screws. It's quite a pretty body. It comes with some plastic protection I can see just a little bit, and that's very nice. These just peel off, they're just statically attached. Yep, good. So it's a nicely protected body and it's absolutely the right color, ready for stickers and stuff like that. That's not bad. It's actually not that different to the Sendero. There's less weight in it, there's less going on underneath, but not much. I guess the most notable difference is, although you've got the light buckets, you haven't got the lights. So you can stick them in if you like. So it's the same uh, basic, I think it's a 16 turn five pole. The servo, the electronics in this system are absolutely adequate for the kind of cars that these are. There's really no need to upgrade them unless you really want some more power, but it's really not necessary. That's my opinion. Uh, it's, it's quite okay for what it is. Some things that I really like about the uh, Element platform, the Enduro platform is, oh look, this paint's still all over it. Ugh. You've got behind the axle steering, so you haven't got a bar sticking out in front across to get caught on rocks and stuff when you're climbing. So that's really nice. Beadlock wheels. Now these are slightly different. These come with the hubcaps as well, but I've just got them off because I changed the wheels quite a bit on these cars. But the suspension, the wheels, the tires, everything's pretty similar. I guess the best thing to compare this to is the Sendero, uh, the Sendero HD. And I'll tell you why that is. For a start, the interior parts are the same. These are really similar cars. If you have a Sendero HD, you'll know what you're getting if you get the Bushido. You can actually buy this body painted or clear uh, from Element. So if you have a Sendero and you just want to try something different, I mean, yeah, all right. So that, sh that shows you just how close the mounting points are. I'm hoping you can see that. Yeah. So you can see just how close it is. It almost fits. Uh, just ever so slightly shorter. That's on the Sendero HD. One thing that jumps out at me is that the approach angle might be considerably better. Let's have a look at that. We'll get the Ecto out of the way. Let's put the, I'll put the Sendero there. Yeah, that's definitely a better approach angle on the Bushido. I love that there's a functional tow bar here, tow ball. Lovely, lovely bar work too, actually. This is a bit of an unstructured review. I know that this thing's been around for five or six months at this point. It's only been in Australia uh, for about three weeks. So I'm always late to the party. I've picked, I've picked a YouTube niche, maybe for the wrong market, since most of you guys watching will be actually in the USA. Uh, anyway, I'll still give you my opinion on things and hopefully it helps. Now here's a comparison of the cars. This is the Night Runner. It's a standard wheelbase, but it has the smaller wheels and crucially, uh, the IFS at the front. So that's, that's your Night Runner. We've got the Ecto, which is very similar to the Gatekeeper. Its main difference is those trailing arms and it has the more standard element uh, grabbers. Then you have the Sendero HD, which you'll see is quite similar. The only difference being it's got your standard four link setup instead of those trailing arms. And lastly, we have the Bushido Des. Bushido is just ever so slightly like the width of a finger shorter wheelbase. And otherwise they have the same internals. Now this goes for the entire Element Enduro range. They are all very similar. Now that was the case until the newest stuff. And we're gonna get into the new Stealth F, I think. The new uh, front mounted Stealth X transmission, which is in the Element Sendero SE. And that's coming in a video soon. I've got the box, it's already here. We're gonna to get to that soon. But otherwise, 
This is kind of like the current generation of Element Enduro vehicles. It's very good. Lightweight, very capable, well equipped, and I love the uh, overdrive that's built into them and the option that they give you. Right, let's get this body fixed up, then we'll have a close look at it. Right, I've mounted the stickers, the snorkel. I decided to go with the side squiggles instead of the, the long lines. The snorkel did add a little bit of weight. It's held in by three screws and two uh, nylock nuts. It's quite attractive though, and I like it. You get three different color choices for that little back sticker and a bunch more stickers besides. Now, if you haven't met one of these rigs before, here it is from nose to tail. Now you're gonna ignore this white paint. I think, again, I've got a dud. They didn't pre prep the body or something, but it's just chipping off everywhere, which is unfortunate. My experience with Element is that you shouldn't expect that most of the time. Right, tube bumpers, adjustable length, and there are holes there. They've got a screw in the back of them, but I suspect you can put an LED in there, but don't quote me on that. I'm not completely sure. Uh, adjustable length, they're currently both in at the maximum length in the front and the rear, and they're the matching kind of tube, more competition style bumper with functional tow bar, which is really fun. Uh, behind the axle steering, we mentioned earlier, aluminium body shocks and everything's set up nicely. It's a three link suspension setup with the pan hard. And so your suspension cycle is just fine. Uh, it's a nice, uh, solid axle like we've had in all the others as well. So that's a universal rather than using a, a CVD. The plus side of using a CVD is constant velocity. So no matter how far around you twist it, the wheel's velocity doesn't change. With unis, when you're over on an extreme angle, it goes fast and slower, then fast and slow as these hinges catch up. So I'm turning at the same speed here, but they go slow, fast, slow, slow, fast, slow, that's a uni. Gives you a better steering angle though. There's metal inside. You have CVDs on that with aluminium and plastic or aluminium. That center moves a little bit, but it's, uh, they're quite strong. I've never had a problem with them. Short battery holder, comes with a long one in the pack. Doesn't come with a battery. The ESC, the Reedy 480, uh, comes already set for, uh, for LiPo, but you just pull the jumper and stick it over there. Now you've got nickel metal hydride. The only difference is you could you could run either like that, but it's a low voltage cutoff. So if you're using lithium battery, have that little jumper on the outside. It is a 16 turn five slot, ready 540. This is roughly equivalent to a uh, 40 turn three slot. It's a bit smoother, lower in punch, but better in low speed smoothness. And for a crawler, I like it like that. Nylon uh, ball ends and uh, yeah, nylon ball ends throughout, as I mentioned before. I like this skid, it's got a lovely smooth skid. Side steps, and you actually get sliders on this, not all of the ones that we had here before come with that. It's a mild steel C channel uh, chassis rail, so it's a mouthful. Uh, three mil steel, it looks like. And you can remove these body mount posts and stick the taller one in that it came with, if you wish. Standard mid-mounted StealthX transmission, roughly 7% uh, overdrive, comes with the gears to give you 12% or 11.83. Uh, and so the front moves a bit faster than the rear. That serves to help pull the thing around. It gives you a little bit of extra oversteer, especially helpful on the rocks. You can also get uh, straight through gears just to give you a one-to-one. -one. For a truck that doesn't weigh much though, honestly, if you, I just leave it unless you really want to try the higher gearing. I put the higher gearing in the Sendero. I think that helps a little bit, but I, I think this will be just fine for this truck. Servo is nothing to write home about. It's the Reedy 1523, but it's metal geared, waterproof, and being chassis mounted, it has sufficient torque. You've got a metal horn as well. It has easily sufficient torque for, again, a vehicle that doesn't weigh much. XP 130, if you haven't seen it before, it's a good basic uh, RTR radio. Steering's fine. It's a cheapish kind of feeling thing, but it's comfortable enough. Doesn't weigh much, four double A's and you have trim for throttle and steering so you can adjust your zero point. So three channel, uh, this is useful. You've got a spot, I'll interrupt myself. Spot for a winch here if you want. No fair lead, but uh, you can put a servo winch there if you like. And you'll need a little ESC or winch controller, but then you've got in and out. Uh, here's your steering endpoints. You can back it off a bit. You can see that that's as much as you want, but it has more in it. 
but we need them more to get all the way, but we don't need to go maximally. We have to go a bit further. Good. Now this is Max. As you can see, not a, a hugely fast crawler. You can artificially slow it down using the dual rate setting on throttle and that gives you more control at low speed. Might be good if you've got young ones playing with it. Just means less movement means the same speed. And throttle reverse, thr throttle and steering reverse switches. That's it for inclusions. I've also put that tape through the body pins so I don't need pliers to pull it out. Because oh boy, that was not kind on the fingers. Right, let's hit the six problems and see what this thing has got to show us. Okay, this is problem one. Now I like this motor and transmission, it's very controllable. If it was too fast, we could of course turn the dual rate down on the throttle and that will work just fine. These tires have never been used. They may have the residue of manufacture on them. Ah, now the overdrive pulled them across. So that is to say they might actually get a little better with time. And this being only slightly shorter, a short wheelbase is strongest on small sharp problems, but it's weakest on steep ascents and descents. So we might see some struggle with this little car, but so far so good. Very composed, very tidy, good drag brake too. Problem one, smooth as silk. Straight into problem two. Now this is where we see the weakness of shorter wheelbase. It's gonna struggle with getting up. Although, if those front wheels can hook over the rock, we'll have a... Oh, actually, this might actually be easier. Let's see. Where's it touching? Front of the links. There we go. Now that servo was under quite a little bit of strain then. It didn't have to work too hard to pull it across there. And I've, I actually have looked at some YouTube videos of, of uh, Element RC reviews since I've made mine. I usually like to make my own without getting any input. I haven't watched anything on this yet, but I have heard some people saying the, um, the stock electronics with the Element Enduro range is, is underwhelming. I think if you keep the vehicles reasonably stock, maybe aside from just adding a little bit of weight, uh, they're well up to the task for a rock crawler. Look at that, smooth as. There's no need to upgrade something that can do that. In my opinion, yours might be different. Okay, now problem three is an interesting one. I have no expectations that this will or won't be able to do it. I, many cars can't. This is, I think one of the two, uh, three of these problems are really tough and three of them are just challenging for certain kinds of cars. We're not too far from falling, and you can't see it, but there's a big hole for that back right tyre here, so you've got to keep the car balanced. And I'm being so careful, but we're not far from tipping. Problem is, if you go too far towards you guys, towards the camera there, to the left, uh, your diff gets caught up on the edge of the little concrete step. So really what many cars have to do is to come up like this, then fall across towards you. And then pull around. <laughs> and overdrive is particularly helpful for that kind of approach. I lost it. There we go. As soon as it starts to come up, then you steer up. You have gotta get that wheel up first. Here, this is the only way I think this car can do this. Got to come back so we don't roll. Oh, it's going to be sketchy. It's going to be sketchy. Okay, look at that. The um, the front left grabbed enough. What needs to happen now is the front right needs to grab, and that that back left needs to get enough traction. It's not going to have it. But if you had a bit more weight in the wheels, pressing down, it would actually start to clear. And if you had a bit more weight in the front, just a little bit, you'd see the front come over like that and then you'd have it. So that's what weight on the axles will do for you. 
This can't actually do problem three. Look at that. Once it made that there, once it made the transition, it was smooth. But there's insufficient weight down low for that for these little tires to get traction. And now because it's winter, these things are full of mud. Uh, so we can't count problem three, but with a bit of weight down low, I think we'd have it. Now just notice the turning circle on this thing. Watch this. Look at that. That's so tight. Beautiful. As we come into problem four. Now, of all the problems here, problem four might just be made for short wheelbase. Because we have a lot of little peaks here. And it might just be able to keep the wheels down. Look at that. Most cars can't do that. Let's turn the camera up. Most cars can't reach uh, a wheel down on each side of these little peaks. There's the limitation of the servo. A stronger servo would be able to overcome that, but it's... Uh, that is tough. All right, so look at that. We've got wheels on each side. Not quite enough. This is the drawback of the Reedy 16 turn 5 slot. It's lacking the immediacy. It doesn't have the punch to just kind of leap itself forward like many other cars do. That is why you hear people complain about it, I suppose. But for slow and steady driving, for the most part, you'll find it's adequate. Certainly, for most of the Element Enduro range, the uh, Fusion SE 1800 KV is a brilliant brushless upgrade. And if you want a cheap servo, I'll put it in the comments. It's the uh, WP5323 HV or something like that, JX servo. And you can run that directly off 2S power. It's really good. Okay, problem four's out. All right, so we've got problems one and two under our belt. Three didn't quite have the traction, but it had the geometry for it if it could just clear that first transition. Four we couldn't do, but pro problem five, I expect we should be able to. I think I'm going to take back what I said before. Uh, I said this servo was adequate. I think I was wrong. It is fading. Now, the kind of crawling we're doing here is a pretty tough ask for any crawler. Oh, look at that. So shorter wheelbase really helps many cars fall here. Uh, but yeah, this servo is fading. It wouldn't hurt to get just a cheap, stronger servo. So the, the JX Servo High Voltage, the Blue Series, I'll, I'll link it in the description. Great servo. That is problem five done. Looks good, doesn't it? And into problem six. Now, this will show you the weakness of the short wheelbase vehicle, more than I think most other problems here. Getting through this section actually is better, but getting up over this, I really don't like its odds. <laughs> but you never know. We're going to come back. Get a bit more lined up. There are holes aplenty in this course. Here's where we want to be. All right. Problem with being straight on though is to part the, the approach angle becomes an issue. And now we're back in the hole. The rear bumper is getting caught on a rock at the left. That's that. We'll just have one more shot of that. This is a fun little machine. I was trying to work out what car to bring as a loaner for the comp we're running in a week or two. And I think I'll bring this. It looks fun. The only thing people are gonna break if they're rough with it is the uh, steering, I think. But that's okay. <laughs> that doesn't look comfortable, does it? It's uh, actually got contact on three wheels. I don't think you could do that if you tried. Hmm. Yeah. All right, let's just see if we could get to the position I was trying to get to, which is roughly that. Does the short wheelbase allow it over? Ooh, look at that, I think it will. 
Oh. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> and smooth too, wasn't it? Not bad. So that's problems one, two, and five successfully done. I've got a hot servo, a warm ASC, and uh, a warm motor, but yeah, that servo is pretty toasty and it was fading too. What I don't like about this car is firstly, these pull tabs were painful. It needs little tabs on it. Just the, sorry, the pins, are, the body pins are painful. Do little tabs, you'd be happy. Uh, that's such a minor thing. Uh, the approach angle's not bad, but the edges of the bar are getting caught. The paint is coming off all around the edges. It's chipping. I don't know if it was just not prepped properly or something, not sure. And the servo could be stronger in extreme crawling situations, but that's a given for most crawlers. What I like, the short wheelbase was not a problem like I thought it would be, for the most part. Uh, the additions you get on the body are very nice. It's a, quite an attractive car, isn't it? The components are decent quality, so you're buying a slightly cheaper brand name, like it's cheaper than the base camp, for example, by, I don't know, 10% or something like that, or five to 10%, depending on the market. Certainly it's a lot cheaper than the Terex 4 Sport. Uh, this is not a bad uh, first entry into rock crawling, and you can always upgrade components later. There's room to change. You can increase the overdrive. The bodies are available, like the parts are readily available from Element. And although it's a basic RTR radio, you do get that third channel, so you can stick a winch on this if you like. It's only single speed, the servo has faded, and you don't get that ready punch of a three pole motor. But what a five pole does give you is longer battery life as well. There's always a trade off with physics. I'm just using a little 1800 milliamp hour, just a cheapy LiPo, 2S LiPo. Absolutely fine. Uh, this certainly ticks a lot of the boxes. I can recommend it. There's a link to it in the description. There's also a link to the other bits I mentioned while we were crawling. For an out of the box experience, this has actually been quite enjoyable. So thanks for watching guys. Throw me a like and stick around because we're also gonna look at the um, Sendero SE with the brand new transmission I've noticed and slightly different tires, something I haven't seen before. I'll look forward to checking this out again soon. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time on RCTNT. Cheers.